there's a sequel coming out to one of my favorite films, and I needed to find out more. Ridley Scott's Blade Runner is one of the most expertly crafted cinematic visions of all time. Now, nearly 35 years later, Denis Villeneuve is directing the sequel, Blade Runner 2049. I'm in Budapest on set. It's day 86 of filming, and I'm gonna have a little look around. So tell me a little bit about where we are and what you're shooting right now. Right now we are doing some shots from the main character uh, flying vehicle, it's Spinner, you know? It's shots where we did earlier in the shoot the aerial plate where the character is flying with the spinner, and today we are doing just close-ups. So it's day 86 of a 96-day shoot. How are you feeling personally? Um, it's by far my longest shoot of my life. It's not every day in your life that you have the chance to work with Perhaps our vehicles are great actors like that, so I feel a blessed. To compose this unique world, Villeneuve worked closely with production designer Dennis Gassner, who created a universe that is both faithful to the original, yet still stands alone. He walked me through his design concepts and how they were turned into both practical sets and visual effects. So this is the feeling of this world here, which is in the orange sky. The world is kind of monochromatic. The way I think is through musical feeling. You know, you put a lot of people in a dark room and they have to wake them up. So you da 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 da. <laughs> so that's da 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 right there. Okay. So da 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 and then da 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 So you bring the audience along narratively through rhythms. In my case, it's color. So you raise things up. You want to create tension and passion in the audience. I think the design of the film was extraordinary. Whether you're working with you know, little dots and doing green screen, it doesn't matter. It's all about imagination, focus, concentration, understanding the ambition of a scene, trying to make that happen. On a green screen, you, you are bound to, to uh, computer graphics that tell you where to put the camera and what the actor, where he will look like. I hate, I mean, I was so grateful that the production agreed from the start that we will build everything. In a dystopian future, humans are forced to turn to alternative sources of food. And Dennis and his team created real physical versions of all of it. What's in here? Uh, food eats the worms. So worm, this, worm farm. This is protein in the future. The future's a pretty awful place. So all these set pieces are, are here for references. So it gives us lighting references and texture references for all the visual effects. So that's why we've done this. This is the Trash Mesa. It's insane to actually be on a set where there's like real physical mess. They've built this up for, I think it was like a soccer field maybe. Um, it's kind of a mixture of these rusty old parts which they've, you know, salvaged from wherever and rubberized foam. It's made to look like rusty metal. Over here is the spinner, the updated spinner which I'm fighting my real instinct to try and get into it, honestly. <laughs> it looks insane. It's a design that we've come up with. We've got two models, one drives, so it can actually drive and steer, has power steering. Amazing. All the doors are fully servo activated, open up. We've tried to create an interior that feels like the vehicle is, you know, 10, 15 years old, three previous owners. There's a lot of life inside it. There's a lot of age. Everything is, nothing is new. Everything is worn down. You can see the, the stains, the marks, the scuffs. Um, it's a set in itself. That set is a massive practical set. It also has a great number of visual effects and also miniatures that combine to create the world that you will see on film. But as an audience, you're watching most of that performance taking place in a real actual environment. 
Denny and his team painstakingly thought out each detail of every prop on set. And the property master, Doug Harlocker, let me test out my favorite, the blaster. So this is the um, original blaster. The person, the collector who bought the original blaster at auction. Oh, I bet he paid a, a pretty penny for those. He did pay a pretty penny, and I, I won't embarrass him by telling how much he paid. Anyway, we brought it to, to my shop. We took a, a really close look at it, and basically we recreated uh, the blaster again, bolt by bolt. Can I uh, hold it? Yeah. Whoa. It's got some heft to it. Yeah, that's why they call it the blaster. It's great. I feel that actors personally uh, need real props, a real table, a real chair, a real room, a window. They need those to believe in the world. Denis, Roger Deakins, Dennis Gassner, all wanted to make sure that the actors were actually in the environments so that you could actually put the actors in the world and they would be transformed into these characters. It was a real passion of Denise and we really supported him in that. It's a fun set because we built practically the facade of a building and you know we have over a hundred lights that are each on separate dimmers to, to create uh, Roger Deakins effect that he wanted. The world in the Blade Runner mythology from the first movie to our movie has really evolved in the sense that the climate is much more harsh and brutalistic. The architecture to some extent is reflected in that. There have been certain sort of seismic events between the two movies that we will start to unfold for the audience. While the actors couldn't disclose much about their characters, I wanted to find out how they responded to the sets and what it was like to work together with Denis on this project. Part of the challenge, at least initially, was trying not to be impressed by the environment, that this in some way had to be like the only thing I'd ever known as a character. I just tried to spend as much time there as I could. How did Denis paint this new Blade Runner for you? The first thing he said was, in my Blade Runner, it snows. I'm Canadian, I need to work in a environment that I understand and that I know is real and truthful to me. And for me, that's snow. And uh, <laughs> I, th I was immediately relieved. And I thought, OK, this guy's got it. I think Denis is a very special human being and is a very collaborative director. Every day you go to set and you feel like we're all ready to throw our ideas on the table and just explore what we're doing at that time. Even some days we, we shoot two different versions of the same scene, so we get to try how it feels like. It's like a lab. It made it easier for us, I think, to just focus on the sort of internal world of the characters because the external world was so fully realized. Mm. And I'm sure it had the same effect for every department. What do you want? I want to ask you some questions. Harrison, to me, is just a movie star, mm -hmm. you know, in that very old school platinum quality. How was it working with him and interacting with him? There's a reason why the majority of his films have become so iconic. And he finds this very elegant, efficient way to, to service that, that responsibility. And it allows everything else to sort of rise to that level. Ryan brings a kind of originality to everything that he does. It's intelligent. You don't see the wheels uh, turning. He inhabits a character rather than uh, struggles to create it. If you wondered how things progressed from the original, it, they got a whole lot worse. The environment is toxic. It feels like humanity is sort of at its end. It feels very grounded, rooted, realistic extension of the original. 
the world will be recognizable to fans of Blade Runner stylistically, but it is a Denis movie. Ridley made some precise choices during this first movie, and uh, I feel that he wanted me to protect the mystery. Can you tell me a little bit about your character and what it was like to inhabit the role and how you prepared for that? No. Are you and Ridley still arguing over whether Deckard is a replicant or not? No. No, we're not. Really? No. I heard that you guys were still debating even after all these years. It was resolved. So which is it? Oh, I, can't, I cannot tell you. Well, God damn it, Harrison, why not? Because then that question will go away and people will not have that pleasure of debating it. Okay. Do you feel optimistic about the future of mankind? Ha, 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 ha.